Hi, and welcome to another repaint video. I'm Hannah from Hoodles, and I'm working on getting better at painting with watercolors. That's not what this video is about, though, as you may have figured out with a thumbnail and all. The series I'm starting is based on Monopoly. Most of us have some kind of relationship to the game. Some of us may have lost relationships due to the game, starting on who got which token. I always wanted to be the hat or the Scottish terrier, and I'm super curious which one you chose. And how many of us have done the mighty rage quit flip in the board? I am kind of guilty of that, my older brother can testify. I wanted to do this series since I started my channel a year ago, planning the concept and bought a book about Monopoly, so I am stoked. Usually I have 8 hours of footage to edit, but this one had around 13, so yeah, the hat was a massive project. I'm making dolls to 6 Monopoly tokens, starting with the hat. These Colira paints are so beautiful. It made sense starting with a hat because of Rich Uncle Pennybags. That's the name of the Monopoly mascot, so I am making a GNC Rich Aunt Pennybags instead. These are the tokens I'm going to be making. The hat, thimble, battleship, iron, shoe and cannon. There is a link in the description where you can vote for which one I should do next. It is anonymous and super easy, just click the link and vote. I'm using Headmistress Bloodgood for this, since I think she'll be fabulous in a mustache. Her head is made detachable, so this was a piece of cake. As usual, I cut the hair close to the scalp, then I scrape it from the inside with a flat screwdriver before making an incision to take out the rests. I cut this prepping short, it feels like you already know the drill. If you're new to my channel and this hobby, this might seem weird, but I promise you, you'll get used to it. I use 100% acetone to remove the paint on the scalp and the face up. This is always so satisfying. Fun fact, Monopoly was called the Landlord's Game initially and came with two sets of rules, the Prosperity set of rules and the Monopolist set. Elizabeth Maggi created the game to demonstrate how different approaches to property ownership can lead to different social outcomes. Nowadays, we only play with the Monopolist rules. Anyway, back to my doll. Since Rich Aunt Pennybags will be fully clothed, I focused on making her hands and neck pretty. I scrape some seams and sand them down a bit. First layer on the face up, I create the outlines and the base. She's getting green eyes with dollar signs, this is going to be a greedy one. Fun fact, again, I'm a teacher on summer break so yeah, bear with me. Rich Uncle Pennybags, whose full name is Milburn Pennybags, is not the only character in Monopoly. We also have Jake the Jailbird and Officer Mallory. I won't be making them mainly because I cannot figure out this picture for my life. I, I don't know, I don't get it, I'm confused. I usually don't use black pastels in my face up, but I did that this time. I shaded under the eyelashes to make them fluffier, if that makes sense. Then I added eye creases, some blue inside the eyes, and some red and pink pastels. Here I used black. I loved how it made the lashes more transitioned. It looked so much better in the end. Second layer, here I made the dollar signs. I made them with two lines because I think it looks fancy, and for the miniature painting challenge. I first sketch with watercolor pencil, but later on I fill it in with acrylics. Here I shaded the iris with dark blue pastels, it makes a huge difference. Then I added some more white and black. Drawing eyebrows with white didn't work that well, but drawing thin veins with blue worked fantastically. I wanted to make her as realistic as possible, because that's the style I feel most comfortable doing. I love the flaws and variations. Outlining the nose a bit does a lot too. Then I started on the freckles. First I mix some red, blue and yellow pastels with water, then I randomly paint them on, poking with my finger to smooth them out a bit. The good thing about using pastels for this is that one can just erase the parts. It doesn't stick that well and needs sealing afterward though. To paint moles, I activated a brown watercolor pencil with water and painted them on. Third layer, I am just enhancing, nothing new. I build on the white and black lines, add more black and blue shading, and then go in with acrylics to paint the dollar signs.
I wanted the nose to be rather red to stand out against the moustache later on, then some blue and pink pastels before I moved on to the next layer. The fourth layer started with some yellow pastels, then I worked some more on the lashes, the shading inside the eyes and highlights. Building colors, this one got five layers until I was happy. Here I used some acrylics for the lips, I mixed red and blue to get a slightly darker red shade, making some lines and creases and whatnot. Finally, I like turning the white pencil and highlight the nose bridge. The final layer, let's bring forth the acrylics. I use the Army Painter because I love them and haven't tried anything else, so there's that. Adding white acrylics makes the face up come alive somehow. This time instead of painting the white starting at the root of the eyelashes, I focused on the outer ones, if that makes sense. She will have white hair so it didn't matter if it looked like she had white lashes, but I wanted to try something new. Finally, I used some Tamiya Gloss Varnish on the lips. And there we go, face up is finished! Now she needs some manicure. I blushed the hands with red, blue and yellow pastels, adding more red to the fingertips because I think it's cute. I am drawing some creases and wrinkles with dark brown and then a white pencil. She got hand tattoos. It says money, but the text on the other hand faces the other way. It is to remind herself and everyone else what is important in life. Then I drew thin veins and arteries with a blue and red pencil. Finally, she got some green nail polish. I'd say it makes a difference. Next is hair. I make wefts like usual, twinning yarn around a piece of cardboard and cutting it. Then I tie it onto a metal hanger thing, brush it out and iron it flat. Then I glue it onto the back of my cutting mat, leaving it overnight to dry, and then peel the wefts off. Before I make curls out of it though, I give her the mustache. I was thinking about how to do this for a while. Should I glue or reroute somehow? And I ended up gluing. If that wouldn't have worked, I could just, you know, peel it off and try something new. No harm done. So yeah, this is pretty cool by the way. I've never styled a mustache before, lo and behold, but I wanted her to have an imperial mustache, like rich Uncle Pennybags, so I used some watered down glue, more hair and scissors, and I think it went fine. Time to make the curls! I trimmed the wefts and cut them into pieces, then I used my homemade curling thing. It's just a wooden dowel, a popsicle, some glue and two binder clips. I clip a piece of weft on one end, curl it around and heat set it. Then I flip it over and do the same thing. When the second one is done, the first one has cooled down and is finished. It's super fast and simple. I did the rest while watching Katla on Netflix. Really good series. It's like an Icelandic sci-fi mystery. I highly recommend it, if you're into that. Before I glue the wefts on, I paint the scalp with white acrylics. I used to forget this, but it's really helpful when using light colored wefts since there might be thinner parts where the scalp might shine through. Then I glue the curls, making sure they are directed away from the face. The parting I do as usual. I'll have to refer to earlier projects because this video is way long enough as it is. This might hurt for some of you, but I dissected her coat and shirt to make patterns. I love her coat, it fits her body type so well, so I wanted to recreate it in black. First I cut at the seams, making sure to cut off the fabric beyond them. Then I taped the pieces onto a paper with masking tape. I only used one side of the coat since the parts are mirrored. Then I trace it and cut it out. I use this shiny black fabric, it's a pretty thick fabric doll scale wise and it will work perfectly as a fabric for coats and pants. I cut out all the pieces and sew the back of the coat together. I made a little extra decorative seam too, it looks so cool. Then I sew the shoulders and attach the sleeves. Then I hem the end and the sleeves and sew a white ribbon to them. This makes it look like she has a shirt underneath. Finally, I sew the sides of the coat and turn it right side out. I didn't show it before, but I also hemmed the edges before I did this. 
This fabric has a risk of fraying, so I glue the edges. This glue smells awful. Then I did the same thing with the shirt, making a pattern and sewing a little copy. I used Moonlight Jewel's pattern from her book to make the pants. They fit so nicely. Then I cut her shoes to make pumps. The edges turned pretty rough, so I used my iron to melt them a bit. Don't do it like me, use a baking sheet between. I learned that the hard way. I added a buckle too for decorations, super glue it in place. More tiny decorations! These are nail art decors and I added them like small buttons. And well, I might as well. Now for the main part. We can't have a Miss Monopoly without a top hat. I made a template with the help of an easily bendable aluminum wire. That was incredibly hard to say. Then I came up with these pieces. I used the same fabric as a coat and some iron-on interfacing for stability. This looks like a derpy plushie. I sewed two pieces of the brim together and turned it right side out. Then I glued a piece of cardboard onto the top and then glued the sides to the cardboard. It helped with the stability. The first hat I made wasn't as fancy though. Here's a comparison, I wanted to show this. Make a crappy first attempt, then make a better second one and so on. I think that's one of the most important things I've learned so far in life. Don't be afraid of failure. Let's move on to the walking cane. I glued two pieces of a wooden dowel together with wood glue, left it to dry and then did some rough carving. I wanted to make a bird skull of some kind. I used two parts epoxy clay to sculpt, it hardens for 24 hours, then you can sand and paint it. And I'm well aware that probably no bird skull looks like this, but hey, that's the beauty of creating something new. That's a weird bird, let's roll with it. After 24 hours I sand it before painting with acrylics. I use a flow aid and many layers to get it nice and even. I used black and leather brown to paint the stick. I wanted it to look a bit marbled for it to have some variations, so I didn't mix it all too much. Then I used a wash for the skull. I gave it a rather thick coat before using a q-tip. It looks better than I imagined. After drying I gave it some leather details, painted the leather with brown acrylics to hide the white fabric. Then I made a little black rubber stump using my glue gun and some paint. Finally I glossed it with Liquitex gloss varnish. I also added some diamond things, no they're not real, or I don't know, I dissected a pair of old earrings to get these. Totally worth it. You can't be an aunt penny bags without actual penny bags, so this is when I started on some serious prop making. I painted little dollar signs on these and everything and they turned out so cute. This is printed miniature money, however, too late did I realize that this is Barbie money, so, and you know, I can't unsee it. You can kind of see her face on them, so, yeah. I spent a couple of hours and a massive amount of toner to change it to proper Monopoly money after finishing the whole project. I'm not showing that though. I forgot to show it, but I added lace at the bottom of the coat, and here I'm gluing money directly onto it. 
She got a briefcase too, I've never made anything similar, so there was a lot of trial and error. I built a base out of thick cardboard first. I glued the pieces together like this. I love making this and I'm definitely making more of these in the future. Can I add this skill to my CV somehow? I had these tiny hinges that I used and to make it all secure as possible, I both sewed and glued them on. You know, just to be sure. I used this super nice fall leather fabric for the outside of the briefcase. There is a lot of gluing going on. First I made a briefcase sandwich and then I let that dry. Then I glued the sides using popsicles and binder clips to secure it. So far so kind of good, there was too much of a gap between the sides, next time I'll have to embed the hinges a bit more, but it's okay since I wanted the briefcase to look like it's overflowing with money. Here I'm using that Barbie money, but I made a last minute decision and changed it as I said earlier. I covered one side of the briefcase, then while that dried I used a clear stamp and some gold acrylics to give it some ornaments. This was crazy simple and I love the effect. I glued some rolled money to give it some volume, leaving one side pretty flat, then I added red velvet to the other side. So cool! Time to add some tiny details! These metal nail art decorations are bendable, so I make some kind of buckle. It looked pretty neat and it was super easy to make. I also painted her monogram, she doesn't have a name like Milburn Pennybags, since she is Milburn Pennybags somehow. I'm just glad at this point that I didn't call her wealthy Aunt Pennybags, that would have been awkward. This is my favorite part of this whole project, I made a Monopoly stand for her. I printed this circular board and sealed it with glue on the top side, then I poured white resin into this mold that I made a couple of months ago. This is very fast hardening, like 20 minutes or so, which is perfect for me. I mix it one to one by weight, stir it around until it's clear and pour it into the mold. Here is the resin hardening at 10 times the speed. It kind of looks like growing bacteria, but yeah, I think it's pretty. Plus this type of resin actually smells pretty good. The board has dried, so I peel it off the plastic. I should have cut the glue on the sides first, but yeah, I'll do that on the next one. Then I paint glue on the backside and place it on the mold. If I don't seal it with glue or some type of gloss varnish, it will turn semi-transparent in the resin since it's regular paper. So this way it's all safe, I hoped. I also give it some pieces of iridescent foil just to make it pretty. I'm going to customize these stands for all the token dolls depending on the character, it will be so much fun. I drilled a hole for the wire with my Dremel, not too deep though so it goes through, then I used a piece of wire from an old calendar. These are great since they are bendable, but at the same time rather sturdy. First I super glued it into the hole. Then I used clear resin on top, unfortunately this one takes 24 hours to cure so I had to wait until the next day after pouring. It's also mixed 2 to 1 which is annoying when making smaller amounts. On the next one I will pour at the bottom and press down the white resin into it or add some kind of rubber band to keep it from leaking on the sides between the white resin and the mold. This time I didn't and I had to use my Dremel to sand some edges. It was okay, but yeah, you know, unnecessary work. I kind of like using matches, a heat gun is probably better though. Let's demold! I cut the edges to make them smoother, sanded them with my Dremel and added another layer of clear resin.
To make the bottom part look neater, I made a velvet disc. I just cut out a cardboard circle, glued the white velvet onto it, and then glued it onto the bottom. I wanted to make a saddle out of the wire, but then I twisted it at the end and it kind of locks in place on the upper part of her thigh. That way she won't fall over, so it was a much better solution. Finally, I added some gems where the resin had some gaps. This is by far the coolest stand I've made. And now I'm finished! It will be interesting to see which token I'll base my next custom on. I'll leave the poll open for like three days from posting this video. Until then I'll work on her familiar. I'm thinking a penguin, but I'm not sure I can pull it off. She definitely needs a mustache and a tiny briefcase though. I want to take this opportunity to thank my Patreons too. Thank you so much. I hope you will like the Monopoly familiars I'll be making. I also want to thank everyone who comments on my videos, there is so much kindness in this community, so much love and support, and I hope more people get into this hobby, the more the merrier. And if you're thinking about trying but are scared of starting and making your first custom or art doll, remember, we've all been there, we all have our first doll. I'm starting to sound like, join the customizer community, we have Mr. Superclear, I just want more people in this hobby, you know. There is strength in numbers. Anyway. This is what I started with, and this is the result. I am so glad I changed the money. Now I don't have to look at Barbie's face in bad resolution. I love it. So here we have rich aunt penny bags. I hope you enjoyed watching the process. Don't forget to vote in the link in the description. Finally, I hope you have a lovely day or evening, depending on when you're watching this, you know? Until next time, bye!